explore a little bit different case. So next level services with AI, the Diana, the Lloyd Intelligent Attendant. It's how about we engage uh, customers in more humanized way using artificial intelligence. Diana is our solution for customer services. She's based on Google technologies, such as contact center AI and dialogue flow and many other uh, add-ons and technologies. We can explore the, the, the architecture in more detail soon. Uh, first, let's understand the motivators behind uh, or the main motivators behind Diana. In the last, we, we saw in Brazil in the last three, five years, we saw an explosion of chatbots implementation throughout all the customer service channels, all the industries in the region, they are implementing chatbots uh, to try and try to automate or to bring more efficiency to the customer services process. So many investments around chatbots were made in the last years. Although uh, those companies invest a significant, a significant amount of money, they are still struggling to have a more, I would say, fluid, efficient, or automated and human, humanized customer service at the same time. Three, five years later, uh, what they got is an increasing on, on costs to operate call centers because people do not talk to machines. They want to talk to, to somebody that solves the problem. So I, I, I always say that people are uh, able to press nine or the, the number to talk to a person. Secondly, uh, a second uh, significant decrease in impact on net promote score. So many uh, uh, people are unsatisfied with the, the services and the customer care. And, and, uh, and a lot of complex to understand and interact with the new process and machines. Uh, in fact, what we see here is bots are able to automate simple and predefined the process, but with the advent of the digital economy, so they want a more customized customer care with a contextual conversation, they're not considering who is considering regional accent, culture, and other aspects. The use of artificial intelligence like Diana can help not only on automate uh, I, IVRs, but also in the entire cycle, the entire journey to, in the many different uh, many different channels. Those are some of the reasons we do not believe on chatbots. What we have today, we still have long waiting time, multiple calls to serve to solve minor customer issues. Process are not clear for users and also for attendants with many options on IVRs, poor data quality, low system integration. People are not well trained, poorly training is provided for the attendants. Procedures are not standardized, process not standardized, needs to need to use main system and low automation on the cuffs. That's the reason we decided to build Diana and support our clients in Brazil, who is paying a lot. They are having a cost process and not humanized, and they are not able to reduce costs. That's the reason we, we, we built this solution. It's a hybrid solution. As I mentioned, it's based on Google's Google tools uh, using contextual AI. Probably very soon we're going to use Bard and other uh, generative AI to support this process and deliver a best customer service. This offers a blend of human bots and AI to serve clients. Uh, the main elements we have here is first, uh, engine to wrote and integrate uh, the calls between telecom and in the applications. Second, the heart, the engine, the, the ability to recognize voice, text, and transform voice to text and text to voice. And third, the, a powerful analytics engine to, that has the ability to learn and work together with the human beings. Uh, of course, this is uh, it's working omni-channel. So uh, considering video, voice, and, and, and text, supporting tools like WhatsApp, or even an SM, SMS, or even through the call center. Uh, based on the experience uh, of these tools, uh, we see that we can be more efficient, efficient than traditional call centers. 
and we can reach up to 30 to 40 percent in cost reduction in call centers. In call centers, let's check one of the of the examples we have and how Diana works. Please, Susanna. Just a second, guys. We're calling Leon now. Are you call Marcia to solve 5G problems we are having now? <laughs> <laughs> One more second, please. Here we go. Hi, I'm Diana, your virtual assistant. How can I help? Hello, Diana. How are you? Hello, Jefferson. I'm fine, and you? Fine, but how do you know it's me? This isn't the first time we've spoken, so I can recognize you by your phone number. Okay. I called to you to help me explain about yourself. Who are you? I will explain, but I would like some help with the slides, so should we invite Susanna to this conversation? Sure, Diana. I'm always here for you. Okay, let's start it then. I'm Diana. Just as I said in the beginning, I am a virtual assistant. I was developed by the AI team at Deloitte Brazil. My main goal is to interact with people in a useful way to them using human speech that we call natural language. Amazing. Do you like your job? Yes, a lot. People are always very open and creative. They help me to evolve. It's hard to talk to people. How do you produce this humanized experience? Good question, Jefferson. Before answering it, I should say that I could only be created through the alliance between Deloitte and Google. So, I use Google tools and platforms to both deliver natural language and keep whatever APIs are needed. That seems complex. Could you explain these tools, please? Yes, but for that, I'll need Susanna and the architecture slides. On the screen, Diana. Okay, as everyone can see on Susanna's slide, I was created on top of a Google tool called Dialogflow CX, which transforms voice or text into structured data giving me the ability to interpret natural language. This tool also enables me to know, define, and categorize intentions. It is based on those intentions that I understand what the other person wants, and that allows me to answer accordingly. And what channels do you work with? I can work with multiple channels, Jefferson. My creators set up connections with integration platforms, such as Genesis, Avaya, Twilio, and that allows me to be omni-channel. Therefore, I can connect to WhatsApp, Telegram, Facebook Messenger, SMS, social media, besides being able to make phone calls like we are doing here. You're very versatile, almost like a human. I still have a long way to go, but I do try. I can even say you're feeling positive right now, an API told me. Positive? What do you mean? Google Natural Language API has an attribute that makes possible to identify if you're feeling positive or negative through its sentiment analysis. This way I can recognize how someone is feeling and thus better calibrate my interaction. 
further promoting the humanized experience that you asked me about at the beginning. So, can you recognize feelings? Hmm. Calm down, Jefferson. I'm still not able to categorize different feelings other than positive or negative, but I'm sure my creators are thinking about how to do this. Okay, Diana. Could you talk more about the APIs and how they work? Good one, Jefferson. I need to connect myself with multiple systems. After that, all I needed to search and validate information from my users, and I can only perform these tasks because I have an architecture based on APIs. My architecture diagram illustrates it in a very clear way. Can you still see it? The architecture slides is still on the screen. Thank you, Susanna, so everyone can see my capabilities. If there is an API between a system or data source and me, I will be able to access your data. Of course, in a safe and encrypted way. Google Dialogflow CX itself makes sure it happens. Safety and privacy first. I love to work with data. Are you also able to give me insights? Got you. You love a dashboard. Don't I you, do. Jefferson? I do. For your information, more than a vanilla attendance control dashboard, I have speech analytics. I'm very interested in speech analytics. Please explain it further. Hmm. Let me think how to explain that. My creators knew that more than controlling information, Analyzing it is useful not only for the business where I am inserted, but also for my continuous learning. In my speech analytics, administrators can identify which type of assistance I perform the most, which assistance causes the most negative sensations in users, in addition to accessing the messages exchanged between me and my users. Susanna, could you help me by showing my speech analytics screen? Yes, Diana, I'm making it available to the audience. Thank you, Susanna. But with so many capabilities, it might take some time to implement you. No, for the first time, I have to disagree with you, Jefferson. If it's the first time a certain company wants to partner with me, I can be deployed in 40 or 60 days, depending on the use case they want me to perform with their users. I suggest implementing use case by use case. That is a journey. That's good news. Be prepared. I'm going to use you in many projects. Okay, but do you have a budget? That's a conversation for another time. Thanks for your help, Diana. Okay, thank you for contacting me, both of you. See you soon. That's a uh... Quick example of Diana, uh, how it works. So it's in this case, she's transforming voice to text, analyze, uh, organize the answers and come back to us with the, the best answers. So now I, uh, I'm passing to Susanna to explain, to wrap and explain the benefits and the offer we have with Diana. Susanna, please. Sure, thank you, Jeff. And thank you, Diana. <laughs> Wrapping up, guys. So Diana has a relatively short implementation time. You have a use case up and running potentially in 60 days. Depend, depends on the use case and depends on the accelerators that we already have here in Deloitte Brazil. Real-time sentiment analysis allows Diana to pick different routes according to customer reaction. Um, of course, we can improve in uh, evolving AI and evolving technologies is going to make the roots uh, uh, bigger and more different than they are. But right now, we already can do it with the simple sentiment analysis that we have. Diana is designed oriented towards the use of APIs, which allows, which allows us to connect to different data Bases and systems. Uh, you could see on the architecture slide, Diana connecting to ERPs, connecting to CRMs, 
uh, and even, even connecting to database that allow the feedback system, right? And, and it, this is very useful for the different use cases that, that you want the you know, to, to, to handle. Humanized experience is possible due to the you know, nat native natural language interpretation. Uh, this is very key for this use case, and it's the very core of the uh, of the of the uh, demonstration that we just did. Diana is omnichannel, right? And last but not least, Diana is able to analyze and control calls, leveraging its own data to produce insights. Here you can see a bit about the benefits of implementing. There are a series of reasons why Diana should be implemented in an organization. Main benefits include a better customer service through human speech, which allows Diana to reduce the time needed to solve a customer need, both in text or in voice. The example that we just gave was voice recognition and Diana interpreted it and analyzed it and was able to voice over her, her response. But we could also use the same example in uh, text uh, using WhatsApp, Telegram, etc. right? Another benefit is improved operation. Since a machine can now access multiple source in a timely manner. And it's all transparent to the customer. So uh, in traditional call centers, we have multiple screens. A human has to access a lot of different systems to understand what is the optimal way to answer to a customer. Diana can access them all by herself, interpret uh, all, the, all the responses, all the feedback from the systems, and use those data, use those information to uh, provide a correct answer to the customer. And of course, all this leads to cost reduction, right? Because uh, for routine, routine uh, um, service, routine calls, I can, I can uh, make it standard. I can make the UNL learn uh, how to answer a lot of different use cases. And when Diana is not able to answer, she can uh, just pass over the call to a human agent. And she can learn with this human agent. And if this type of call uh, that, was not, um, that was not solved by her is uh, very frequent, we can uh, choose to make Diana learn and then answer the, the the, the next time with the same feedback that the human agent provided. This makes uh, more calls, uh, um, uh, uh, um, more, more, more interactions uh, always made by Diana, and we can use humans in a better way, not to always solve the same thing, but actually to provide a better experience to the client. And of course, we will need less humans to answer calls, right? Especially the, the standardized ones. But all of this leads to cost reduction, especially because we answer uh, customer needs uh, uh, quicker, quick, faster, and in a in a um, more adequate way. Those are some of the use cases that we have. We have use cases in different industries, in different areas, right? We, are, we, are, we have already trained Diana in a seri series of cases and cross industries. Some of them include more generic scenarios, such as contract change or cancellation or change of address, and also request of second invoice, for example. Other use cases are more business related, such as cardinality negotiation or a doctor appointment schedule, for example. This connects to other um, possibilities because 
we could use Diana, for example, connected to the Open Care 5G use case that we have just seen. And uh, more people could be um, um, benefited from this, from this interaction, because as you could see on the previous use case, there is a shortage of physicians. And if Diana can be the first point of contact with uh, uh, those patients, a trial could be done in a, in a more timely manner and the correct information could accelerate the work of the available physicians. So there are a lot of different use cases that we have um, already embedded as, as an accelerator for Diana. For each one of the clients that we have, of course, we need to understand the correct uh, way of implementation and we need to customize to the specific business needs that we have. And uh, with that, we finalize our brief explanation about the Diana capabilities. If you're curious about our solutions, please do not hesitate to reach out. We will be super happy to answer all your questions. I'd also like to thank Marco and Marcia, Jeff, and everyone from the like all over the world involved in setting up this event and wish our colleagues a wonderful conference. As I was presenting, I could not see if there are any questions, but I think we have a bit of a time. So we will be available. If not, I hand over to Australia and good luck, friends.